So this is a video um, teaching on the topic of, of function, as in functions versus relations, and uh, we're going to explore the idea of domain and range and a few things like that. This should enable you to be ready to tackle the first homework, homework 2.3 on the XYZ site. So first of all, the idea of function, I want you to think about uh, really a machine is a great example. Because the whole idea of functions is that you're inputting something and you're, out, and you're getting some kind of output. Generally, it's a relationship between two sets of numbers in mathematics. We we have something that's called a relation that is also connects two sets of numbers, and then functions are a specific type of relation. Okay, so relation is anything that that uh, connects one set of numbers with another. A function is a specific rate relation, so it connects it connects two sets of numbers. But what's special about a function is that every every input has only one output. So every time you drop the number one into a function, you're going to get the same answer out. If you drop in two, you might get a different answer. But if you drop in two again, you'll get the same answer you did last time you dropped in two. So that's the difference between, a, that's what makes a function special, is every input has only one output. So over here we've got a list of, um, generally we, we re relate the variable x with input and the variable y with output. We also refer to x as the independent variable and y as the dependent variable, because in functions you always have one, one variable that's dependent on the other variable. So, um, and we often re write functions in this way, f of x. And this is a reminding us that, that the, of course, this is just another way to write y. Uh, this is reminding us that um, the y variable, or the second variable, the, the, in, the dependent variable, is dependent upon x. So I have, to, I have to input an x in order to find out what y is. So if you think of this up here as a function machine, you put, say, f of x in here, if I drop in a 2, then it's going to do something to it, and let's say maybe a 5 comes out. Okay, so that's the idea of function. Now we have a lot of different ways to express functions. Um, we can express them, let's see, ways to express functions. We can express them using um, equations. like f of x equals x squared, or you could write it as y equals x squared. Uh, we can also express it using a graph, and that would look maybe something like this, if we did that same function. Some of you are familiar with that, what these guys look like, right? That's, my drawing is a little bit wavy today. Okay, we could also express a function um, using a table. So it might look something like this. We put an X and a Y here, and you put in, say, 1, and you get out 1. Put in a 2, you get out a 4. Put in a 3, you get out a 9. Another way to express a function, when I'm expressing the same function over and over again in different ways, so you could use an ordered pair, a set of ordered pairs. So like, for example, like we just did, 1 comma 1, 2 comma 4, 3 comma 9, etc. That's supposed to be an R there. Okay. Another way to express the relationship between two sets of numbers in the form of a function is um, we could use a description. Description in words. So if we're, if we're describing that same function, we might say the, the dependent variable is the square. 
square of the independent variable. So there's just some ways, and we're going to, throughout this class, we're going to work on different ways of describing and, and really work at switching back and forth between these different types of ways of expressing a, a variable, I mean, expressing a function. Um, so in all these different forms, you should be able to recognize whether something is a function or not. And so remember, what is a function? A function is uh, a relation, so it, it connects two sets of numbers. Um, and every input has only one output. So for example, if you're looking at a ordered pair, like one comma two, three comma four, five comma seven, and eight comma 13. If this is the, um, this would be some samples of items that are in the, uh, or connections that are in the function. Um, so looking at this, can, how can we tell whether this is a function or not? Well, you notice that when I plugged in one, I got out two, and there isn't any other time I plugged in one and got a different answer. Same way with three, and when I put it, plugged in three, I got out four, and never any other answer. When I plugged in five, I got out seven, never any other answer. Plug in eight, I got out 13, never any other answer. So this would be a function the way it sets. Now, if I said, oh, wait, wait, I forgot, there's another um, entry here, and then I tell you that Oh, by the way, um, this is also a point on the graph, or this is also a coordinate pair. So notice now this is not a function. Why is it not a function? Because one time I plugged in a three and got out of four. The second time I plugged in a three, I got out of five. So here's the same input with two different outputs. And that would make it not a function. Likewise, if we're looking at a um, looking at a graph, say, is this a function? Well, again, we're checking to see if there's any x any x value or any input value is connected to two different y values. So, in a graph, the way things are connected is by a coordinate pair. So notice like, for example, um, this point right here is roughly negative 2.7 comma zero, right? So the question is, neg is negative 2.7 connected to any other y value? If you look above the point and below the point, you don't see any other part points in the graph. And so there is a, when you're looking at a, when you're looking at a graph, there's a thing called the vertical line test and notice the way that works is if you draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph it should only cross the graph once if it gro if it cr crosses the graph more than once that would mean that there's one x value connected to two different y values so if it only crosses the graph once then it is a function and you can tell here that no matter where i draw that vertical line this is going to be a function Okay, so there's a little um, couple examples of determining whether something is a function or not. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about in this video is domain and range. So when I'm looking at a function like f of x equals 3x squared plus 2, I'm basically asking for, when I'm asking for the domain, I'm asking what x values can I plug into this function and actually and get out an answer. And the general assumption is that I can plug any number one into a function, um, except for where there's a problem. And the problems that we have, what, are, what is a problem? Known problems in our mathematical world is you cannot divide by zero, right? We all know that. If you plug in the calculator five divided by zero, you get undefined or error or something like that. So that's one known problem. The other problem is we cannot take the square root 
of a negative number. And those are really the only two problems that we know of at this point in mathematics. So um, at your point, at your level, at the pre-cal 1 level at the beginning, there will be more as we get go on through the class. So if I look at this function right now, I ask myself, is there anything, any number that I plug in for x that would cause me to divide by 0? And the answer is no. There isn't any division going on in this problem. Second question, is there any number I could plug in for x that would cause me to take the square root of a negative number? And notice every time, well, first of all, there's no square root anywhere in here. But anyway, on the other hand, if I plug in a negative number in for x, it's going to be squared right away anyway. So I'll never really have to deal with a, a negative number. So this, the domain of this thing, would be all real numbers. Now range, of course, is a different question. Range is asking what y values are possible. And um, if you uh, are excelled in your prerequisites for this class, we know that this thing is a parabola. So we know that it um, looks something like this. It starts, um, we know that it's open upwards because of the positive 3. Um, and so we know that the range of this is going to be have some lower value and it will go up to infinity. So, and again, the, the idea of this is, this is a, this is a parabola, um, and if I plug in zero in here, I would, this, this value would be zero, and it'd be plus two, so the lowest value I'm going to get for this is two. So the range on this thing would be from two to infinity. Now notice I put a square bracket here and a, and a rounded bracket here. The square bracket means to include the endpoint, and the round bracket means exclude the endpoint. So this means including, starting at 2 and including 2, go on to infinity, go up to infinity. So let's look at another example of x is equal to the square root of x plus 2. Now notice in this one, when I say what's the domain of this function, the question is, um, I assume it's all real numbers unless there's a problem, but notice there is a problem here. I could end up dividing or taking the square root of a negative number. So I have to ask myself, what is going to cause this inside the square root to be negative? And the answer is any number less than negative 2. So that means my domain has to be negative 2 and greater. And it is OK to be negative 2 because I can take the square root of 0. So this would go from negative 2 to infinity. The range of this thing, um, this is probably a function that you're less familiar with. You can throw this in a graphing calculator. And if you did, you'd find out that it looks something like this. And you can see from that, the, the range starts at 0, and it goes to infinity. Remember, this is talking about x values. This is talking about y values. We're just giving a list of all possible x values, a list of all possible y values. And I think we'll end this for right now. So that gives you a good st head start on identifying functions and talking about domain and range. Um, I will do another video shortly talking about piecewise functions which are also included in the first homework.